occasionally I'll hear discussions of SLOC, otherwise known as source lines of code. Basically, the number of lines of code that make up an application. And while this does relate to very important parts of the software, one thing that it has almost no relation to whatsoever is the performance of the program. And I really wish that people would stop trying to group these together. Now, you might be saying, but... If it has more lines of code, wouldn't those more lines of code take longer to execute? Well, that's not necessarily going to be true. This sort of misunderstands what a high-level language actually does. And I'm including things like C in this case. That is still a very high-level language compared to working directly with something like machine code or assembly. So if we take two blocks of code, let's say one of them is assigning a variable and then adding a number to it. And then we have another block of code, which is, I don't know, just printing out the string hello world. Which one of these has more lines of code? If we are talking about source lines of code, that's going to be the first one. But computers don't actually run source code. This code needs to be compiled or interpreted into a form the computer can actually understand. And if we go and take that second print statement, printing something to the screen is a vastly more complex task than just adding two numbers in memory. While these are two very different tasks, what this does tell you is that looking at the source code directly doesn't really tell you how big the output binary is actually going to be. Unless you have a compiler in your brain, maybe you do, in which case you can make this assessment. But most people probably don't have that. Now, this doesn't mean that writing a longer program inherently makes it faster. You can write an intentionally long program that's it just bad. It can have unnecessary calls, useless nested loops, and a bunch of other stuff that'll slow the code down, but you can also write way longer code that is way faster. For example, there is a practice known as unrolling a loop, where rather than iterating through every step of the loop, you instead make all of those calls manually. Now, while that might not seem like it will be quicker, in some cases that will cause the application to run a little bit faster, even though the binary will be a little bit bigger. Ultimately, the only way to properly talk about performance is actually doing the performance testing, working out which modules of the system actually are slow and where they can actually be improved. You can't just say, hey, this project has a hundred thousand lines of code, therefore it is worse than this one that has 50,000 lines of code. There might be a reason for those extra lines, maybe it does slow the program down, that's very possible. But you can't just look at the source code and say, that one is worse because it's more. There is a high level way we can talk about performance though, and that is big O complexity. While not explaining everything happening in reality, or breaking down an algorithm to exactly why one performs better than another, it does give you a general idea about how your algorithm is going to perform. So what it is, is a mathematical notation explaining how quickly the number of operations will increase as the size of the data set increases. And this chart here gives you a good visual representation of how the different forms actually perform. So if we have something that is a big O of one, that is going to be doing something like an array index. So no matter how big the array gets, accessing something in that array is going to take just as long as if there was one thing in that array. Whereas if we have O of N, this increases at a linear rate. So this would be something like having a single loop. So if we have, you know, 10 iterations of the loop, and then we go up to 100, that is going to be a linear increase of the number of times that loop needs to run. But you might have something that is O of N factorial, which as you can see, basically makes it impossible to compute above a couple of elements. A good example of n factorial would be something like the traveling salesman problem where given a list of cities, you have to calculate the shortest route that visits every single one of the cities and takes you back to the origin. This, as you increase the number of cities, becomes more and more computationally impossible and within a short number of elements, basically is going to take until the heat death of the universe.
So you would try to avoid things in this section of the graph basically at all costs. Maybe if you're working with something that you know is only ever going to have a very small data set that puts you down in this section here, maybe it's not going to be that big of a deal. But if you know the data set is going to be growing, doing something like this is basically asking for disaster. So let's go with a bit of an example. Let's say we have two blocks of code. One of them is going to be 100 lines long, and it is going to be n log n. And then we have one that is 10 lines long, and that is going to be n to the power of 2. So this line right here. And let's say the amount of data we're working on puts us on the line around here or so. With the o n to the power of 2, that you can very clearly see is going to take basically forever to run. Even though it has way less lines of code and the binary is going to be smaller, the resulting algorithm is not worth the smaller binary. So I've been saying that lines of code doesn't relate to performance, but what does it actually relate to? Well, one of the things it can certainly relate to is how long the code is going to take to compile or to interpret. And while we can't compare different languages, so if we take, I don't know, some C code and some Rust code, or even some C code and some Python code where Python uses an interpreter, we can't go and compare these two and say which one actually does the job faster. They're completely different languages with completely different structures and completely different compilers, so making that judgment doesn't really make any sense. But if we're talking about the same language with the same build chain, Generally, if you have more lines of source code, it is going to take longer to compile. But there is one big but with that, and that depends on the libraries you're using. So one of the advantages of using a high-level language is you can make function calls that do a bunch of stuff in the background, but all you have to write is a single line. And if you're calling someone else's library, well, unless you know how many lines of code are in that library, you can't really say how many lines of code are in your actual project. But even ignoring the library fact, lines of code aren't going to be equal. So as I mentioned earlier, doing things like addition is going to produce a much smaller result than trying to print something to the screen. One of those is a vastly more complex operation than the other is. But both of them only take up one line in the source code we write. More lines of code may also be indicative of complexity. So this complexity might be in the form of new features, but it may also be in the form of overthinking and implementation, doing things like accounting for impossible situations. Let's say we take some user input and then we validate that input to make sure, I don't know, let's say we need it to be in a date form, but then every single function you send it to, you then validate the input again. That isn't something you really need to do because you've already validated it, and once it's in the system, it should say validated. But less lines of code doesn't always mean less complexity. If you have really bad spaghetti code, but it's really short code, that doesn't make it better than unraveling that code to make it considerably more readable. If you're using unchecked go-tos just to do everything around your system, that might make the code way shorter, but it might make it way harder to read as well. And there is also the maintainability problem. So even the greatest programmer in the world is occasionally going to write a bug or is going to forget about some edge case and someone will need to go back and actually fix those problems. And having more lines of code is going to potentially make it harder to actually introduce a new developer into that system. So if a code base has 1,000 lines of code compared to 10,000, reading those lines of code theoretically should take less time if there is less lines of code. Now, that doesn't account for really overly complex short code where you're just jumping around for no reason, but assuming the system is written well, then less lines of code should make that easier to maintain. Also, having more lines of code does increase the surface area that bugs could potentially appear. And that may make it harder to test for those bugs. You may fix one of the cases that produces the bug, but find out later there was another case that produced the exact same bug, but because there were more lines of code, you didn't even realize that case had even existed or you missed actually testing it. The point I'm getting at here is it's very difficult to make absolute statements when it comes to programming. While you can point to a project that has way more lines of code than its competitors and is also way slower, I can point to something that has way more lines of code 
and is way quicker. So making that assessment just really doesn't make any sense. If you want to talk about the performance of a project, actually go and test the performance of it. Don't just say more lines of code equals worse. And especially don't say that if we are talking about projects that are written in completely different languages. Just because it's written in Rust and has more lines of code doesn't inherently make it slower. I know that someone's going to be like, oh, but Rust is Rust a bad language. I don't care. Actually go and do the testing and then tell me if it is actually slow. That's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Sully Berape, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and then this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.